to be here with you again. Huh? This is my third or fourth time, I think. Mm, thank you for inviting me. And as you know, I've known Amitji for a long time now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's nice to be invited. And, uh, and you're very lucky, no? Yes. To have a good teacher. As I always remind you that who dedicated his life for you people, it's not easy. And I have a little bit of taste of that. When I first came to Australia, you know, I had to, it's a big sacrifice in the beginnings. It's, it's a good, it's a rewarding thing. And we should be always grateful, you know. You know, when I look at the world today, this is what I find, the uh, lack of gratitude. We are born in this beautiful place, whole universe, no? where you go is beautiful and abundant. Yet uh, people are not happy. We are living in a heaven, almost a heaven. But people are not happy. No? And I work with all sorts of people, from bottom to top. But I see the same pattern. And it's nothing to do with the external world. There's something wrong within us. Isn't it? And I always wonder, I'm a, as you know, professionally I'm a clinical psychologist and I meet people. And I always try to go a little bit deeper than so-called presenting problem to see what is really going down. And I always end up seeing there's something dissatisfaction within themselves, nothing to do with the external thing, nothing to do with the so-called presenting problem. You know, sometimes maybe like one day, Buddhism and Hinduism, we talk about the dukkha, no? almost like what we call existential anxiety. So I always wonder why is that? And on the way I was thinking, it's a very interesting paradox in human life. I'm just talking what to account my mind, okay? It's not a prepared talk. And we all agree that our perception is not accurate, no? And it's been taken for granted. And the, what I see and what you see and what we think, all of our cognitive processes are very different from person to person, isn't it? And uh, all in the history, in the East and the West, people always talk about it. And they always wondered, considering that complexity of our perception, for example, can we ever know the reality? You know, because what we always see, our own presentation, interpretation, it's, 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 it works. But it's different. There is something else there. So what that time, what the philosopher trying to say, the way we, what we see, it may not be what it is, which we all agree. So if we go deeper then to that question, in that case, how we know may not be correct either. If we know if our perceptual process is correct, then we should be able to see things happen. So when you look at them in both ways, we don't know the reality or we don't know the mechanism of how we come to know either. 
And we don't question it. We just, just go around, isn't it? Taken for granted. So when you look at that life, as you can see very well, it's a condition. It's like acting. If you are an actor in a particular play, all you need to know is your part. So as long as you act it out, it's okay. I think this is what is happening. So we created this world and we just playing a role in that. But the one who is playing, the, no sense of that. And so the acting is going on, we take, is everything okay? It's so only when something happened, we should own that. And today, like what is happening, nature sends some little bugs. Oh, I, the whole world stops. And we don't know what to do. Really. And people are restless. Because that whole that acting part stopped for a while. So we had to relearn. Can you say? And then once we learn that, and again we become like a zombie. But I think nature trying to teach us not to learn how to play the game again, look within. You know, some people get that opportunity. And many people don't get, because even if they want to do, where can we get that information? Where can we turn to? You, you follow what I'm saying? That you people are very lucky. You have this opportunity to hear something. Majorities don't have that, isn't it? We just lost. And we just say we have to stay at home, and what we're going to do at home, we don't know. It's very frustrating. That's why despite uh, uh, danger of virus, people don't want. They want to go back to that habitual pattern. Isn't it? People are willing to risk their life. And just recently I heard they're called the liberty sake. It's not the liberty. The, the truth is they don't know what to do with themselves. See this Atma Vidya in Hinduism, Buddhist token, until we fully realize who we, what we are, we are not going to be happy. That is the problem. The problem is not having or not having that lack of self-awareness. And that is why people who attain their self-awareness, they are really happy. But if you ask them, why are you happy? They have nothing. They haven't got anything to be happy, but they are fully happy. <laughs> they are not pretending, isn't it? You get what I'm trying to say, like yogis. In the living in the Himalayas, nothing to eat, but they're so beautiful faces. You know, there's an interesting case that came to my mind. The one of the Dalai Lama's uh, students, he's a Frenchman, Matthew Ricard. You must have heard; he's quite famous. He has a PhD in molecular biology in France, and highly educated, as you know, scientist. He said he just, one day a friend of his sent him a, some photo from Nepal or somewhere. He said when he took this photo, he couldn't believe. He said, these people have such a beautiful smile. And he said, what the heck, why are they so happy about what? <laughs> you know, are they pretending? They have nothing to be happy. But the face is glowing. So he thought he should to go and look into this before he started his career. And he went to Nepal and India. He said, this is amazing. And without all this high education, material success, we can't even just mind a little bit of what they can. So ultimately he ended up in Dalai Lama, became a disciple now almost 30 years, gave up all that beautiful career trained to be a scientist, and just recently they studied his brain. 
and he really had a good heart, compassion. When they found out there's a particular part of the brain very difficult to activate, it's only when you come to that compassion and he can do that. And said, so the reason what you I'm bringing up, his message, and we all know what I'm trying to say, we are born with this beautiful life. And all happiness is with it. When we go outside looking for missing, how can you find that? Because what you're looking for is here. And when you go from out, you're never going to find out. It's a simple logic, isn't it? If it is something here, you have to come here to find that. Why don't they see that with this scientific knowledge? Why we can't see that? I mean, that is your job. That's why you're doing the yoga. To find out it. What is the secret? Is there really a secret? You know, so when I was a little kid, I always wondered that. You know, I, I'm just sharing some personal experience. You know, I was in a beautiful beach area, in the sunset, it's something very really transformative. And I always felt, this is where it is. And we know that, like our mind, always go around looking for something to be happy. Isn't it? That's what we're doing. We think if I have a little car, if I have a good job, if we live in the right place, we will be happy. We always put the object to external thing. Happiness is right there. And it deludes us. If I say, oh, if I can get this particular car, I will be happy. So we worked hard to it. And once you got that, we feel happy. So it reinforced that illusion that happiness is to do with having them. Isn't it? See how we get deluded, okay? And then after a while, you lose interest in that. You can't get the same happiness. Then like any addiction, the senses get, the sensitivity get coarser and coarser, so we need a higher dosage. So then we say, throw that away, and we're looking for something. Again, the same myth, because of previous experience, say, eh? well, if I have a new one, I'll be okay. So we work hard. And we get entangled with the cable of reinforcement. You know, the Optus people send me a message every day. I think they're wasting their time telling the latest iPhone. <laughs> Okay. Colors and everything. All you had to pay just forty dollars a month, three years. And of course, in, within a year we will lose interest in one. Then I look at that, and people are fighting, and it doesn't give pleasure. No? We can't deny that. Then it reinforcing that there's something to be missing out. Can you, you may be able to guess now. We don't realize the external thing is only a trigger. The happiness or unhappiness are within. Understand? And so we need the external thing to activate that. And that is where I get in trouble. So when something activates, and we take that activator as the thing itself. So we try. So if we want to get out of this, we have to, as I said, come back to us. The happiness is right within. The external thing are just a trigger. That it's a big 
transformation. Why? Patanjali saw this very clearly. Chitta Bhutti Niroda. Our senses are constantly running after. That's the problem. Who wants to see this happiness or unhappiness within, we should be able to focus on that process. But we can't. Because by nature, by default, senses are constantly running after. No? In the yoga, what they call the indriya control, pratyahara. No? You see, that's what I hear. Because unless we can learn to control this process, we can't observe it. If we don't observe it, then we are trapped. These are dynamics, there is not a philosophy. Very biological processes happen. Philosophically, thinking doesn't work. We have to be able to experience it, get in touch with that process. See, this is why we can't do it. Because our by default, we constantly, our senses want to go after. No? You can see that when you're going to do the, the meditation, after a few seconds, you can't do it. The senses need to go after. You can see that, isn't it? Unfortunately, unless we can stop that process, how can we do that? You know now the scientists have discovered this. This self-awareness, they call it nature's fluke. It doesn't, we don't need that. Interesting, isn't it? We don't need to have that awareness at all. We have this brain or mind, it at condition. So what we need to do, just to condition it. And that's what we've been doing anyhow. Science doesn't need to say us from our birth to death, that's what we're doing. Our brain or the mind is conditioned. And that's why people like you who do the yoga or meditation become different group. So what you're doing is not necessary <laughs> for survival. For the survival, you have to learn how to deal with external things. Because that is why where we find the happiness. Because you already said that happiness is in there. See? So then we train to go after external things. But the more we go, that it reinforces that we meet. At the same time, it hinders us any opportunity to look with it. So in a way, look at that, human beings are in a way, it's very sad, no? One hand gifted, on the other hand, we are deprived. Unless you work very hard, we never get touched with that. But when you compare now this to animal, if we are animal, I think we don't need the self-awareness at all. Why? Their need, everything, very limited, very well set up. Just imagine, just recently I was watching dog show. Somebody asked me to watch this. Unbelievable, beautiful, group, 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 no? Cart, and there's one particular dog when I saw, I couldn't believe my eyes. So beautiful. And in fact, the dog sitting like a princess. Then I was looking at him. I said, wow, what a beautiful. And there are little other dogs here and there. I was not interested, I was looking at them. And then later I observed a bit, and I saw other dogs come and they look at them. Just and I feel very shame. Why? Here I'm sitting and admiring that dog for other dogs. <laughs> Even the dog, there are no comparison. 
isn't it? But we compare. They don't compare. Do you think it's a simple point that this is where the whole source of the problem, you know, comparison. Our, this perceptual process, again, by default, is to discriminate it. <laughs> to perceive something, we have to compare. But animals also see, they stop there. It's a different, and then they see this target and go oh, there, that's all. But when we compare, we put value. Then it's all, this is better than that. Can you see? And it's a whole process of it. And at the end of it, we're creating a world that not exists, except they say, and that is what the samsara means. We created the artificial world and we living like acting. We can't stop. And one of the Indian art critic, I'm sure Amit know better than me, Bharatamuni. In Nath Shastra, he said a very beautiful thing. He said a lot of people, please correct me if I'm wrong. And he said the people are more concerned with training how to act. He said, no, that's not important. We have to train some of them. We had to train the audience how to enjoy the drama as well. Understand that? I said, that's a beautiful say. To enjoy your drama, you have to be detached. You have to completely stop this attachment. At the same time, you have to be detached. It's a paradox. You have to be with the show, at the same time not to be in it. In it means commenting on that. If you take a side of the play, you lose the whole thing. So the more you detach, you get the better perspective. And then you, you are not in it, you are not away from it. Yet. That is meditation, isn't it? Not to run away from the world, okay? But be in it like a lotus, like a Buddha would say. So the lotus need the mud and grow in it. But if it is stained with the mud, it will spoil it. It has to be it's a delicate balance. But how can you do this? Too much for human being, isn't it? Because one hand of brain is conditioned, bombarded with conditioning. It demanding us more and more involvement, not away from that. How can we stop it? And many do that, as I said earlier, they get very frustrated because we work so hard to be happy, but we can't. The will get lose interest. Who does that? The same program. That's a comparison. Today we see this phone is better, we buy it. But the same perception, next time say, oh, this is not good, that the other one. Can you see that? We are completely controlled by our perception and the information and perception. Get this very seriously. We are innocent. We want things more and more. Okay? Because our perception says this is beautiful, this is valuable, this is better than the other. We are not fools, no? So we want that. So we work hard. And the same perception till next time, or oh, now the, the new model is better than the other one. 
Can we stop that? Because first we obey to be operating on that same mode. So now we can't go against that mode. And the same mode say now time to, now this can't give any more happiness. So if you want to be happy, Bhajanava. So we are trapped our own thinking. Oh, that's it. You can see it. So when you do that, we feel very tired, isn't it? Can we avoid that suffering? So we are trapped. Constant struggle. Just to be happy. But we can't. How do you feel it? Very soon we get sick of our own being. Then we begin to think there's something wrong with us. Isn't it? But we don't realize the problem is within, but at the same time it's a program. It's a problem. But we don't know those things. We think, oh, I'm not happy. I'm tired. You know, life is useless. Eventually we wonder, what for? Why do we do this thing? You can't deny that, is it? That also part of the program. That this program based on the view everything is physical. And this is what the most important for you to have appreciate the yoga or Buddhist meditation, you have to question that. At this moment, we are operating on the belief everything is physical. Can you deny that? If you just be honest for a while, if you ask, that's what we see, isn't it? We see the body, we look around, all we see physical. And we compare. And we see, if you want to be happy, as I said earlier, you get a good education, but I'm all to do with physical things. It's reinforced. So the only problem is something wrong with here. Because we are not capable of going after as much as we should, because happiness is there. Correct? Everything is there. The problem is this. This being is going down here. No? <laughs> the, the world we want to go after, very beautiful. But the one who had to go after, not his strong. Paradox and conflict. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? One hand, the world is beautiful. There are so many things to achieve. And we are told that is where the happiness is. But we can't keep up with it. Isn't it? Because this body is not capable of doing those. Then, eventually what happened, we put the blame here again. The problem is not there. The problem is this stupid body. You see, all the psychological problem is the problem with the brain. But none of those problems has anything with the brain. <laughs> you see? And they think, oh, it's because your serotonin level is no good, dopamine no good. That's where the problem is. But if you ask the brain, it has nothing to do with it. It doesn't, can't deal with too many ex external stimulus. It's bombarding. That's the problem with it. You understand? The brain can't keep up with that. This is not designed for that. Brain is designed for very different purpose. So we again put the blame. 
onto this bed. And this is what I find the foundation problem is. Now I have a question for you, okay? I have a question, you have to fill the gap. After listening to what I said, you may be able to guess it. There's an angry mind, sad body. It's a metaphor for what? It's a metaphor. Angry mind, sad body. Metaphor for what? What comes to your mind? It's a good metaphor. Something observable. I came to know this observation. What could be that? You could see this. It's a metaphor for illness. You know, this state, <coughs> one day I was working with somebody. And then I told this client, you know, all you need, take a couple of days off. And she says, I know the way. She goes so upset. Very angry. You know, I was looking at her and she said, lying down. Why a couple of days, you know, I can take care of and say, like, all I need to go and tell my boss. He might tell me, why three days you can stay at home? And I could see the anger. And I see the body, very sad. Because the body needs a little bit to relax. The mind says, no. If you relax, you lose your job. And I say, and imagine if you lose your job. The whole world is collapsed, isn't it? Is it, can you deny that? I mean, you're in that situation. How many of you had to pay your mortgage? If you don't go to work, what happens? Can you see that? So the body needs to relax, but the mind can't. And the mind needs to go constantly right running, running, running. The moment if you stop, whole thing collapse. But the body wants to relax. Can you see that? So when you look at that, you can see the angry mind, body is very sad. And that's when the foundation of illness. If you keep on doing that to your body, its immune system will come. If today, this is the best solution to this corona or whatever, to handle that. You know, to immune, uh, develop our immune system. That's all we need to do that. But to do that, we have to change quite a lot. No? It's not easy. We have to change all our lifestyle, our ambition, was to put the simple word, our priority. Can we do that? We can't. To get the vaccination, however dangerous it may be, we prefer that. Even though at this moment, we all may reject it, when it comes to crisis, we all surrender it, because it's quicker. You understand? So we go into that. We take such a risk. If you honestly look at that, we take that risk because 
we believe to be in the world, go for it, far more important than taking care of this stupid body. We may not think that way, that is what operating view. You might ask what for? What is the use of taking care of a body? For what? Hmm. Understand? We are here just to enjoy. Enjoyment is there. So if we can't do that, for what what for? Can you say that? So we are just here to enjoy the world. So if we can't enjoy the world, we will not as well be here. Beautiful logic, isn't it? Can you see a conceptual system trap here? Yeah. So that is why this whole yoga, everything, they said first thing, you had to question them. That very paradigm need to be questioned. That means asking, is it our purpose? If it is, then you have to go for it. If it can be questioned, if you can realize, then the process will become much easier. Otherwise, it become a little bit of a sour grape, no? And that's what, what is happening in the world. Even people who go to spiritual life, they are a bit of lost there, half heart. They don't have full conviction like Amiji would have to give up all the education and throw it away and just learn to sit on your head. <laughs> Who would want to do that? Hmm? Isn't it? Be honest, who would want to do that? What can you gain just sitting on your head? <laughs> hmm? It's much better going to work hard and get a beautiful car. You know, enjoy life, no? you see? So how can we get out of that? A little bit here, a little bit doesn't work. Actually, it's not a real renunciation external, inner renunciation. We have to have full conviction where is the truth. Okay? So if you do your yoga and try to get a glimpse of that, this all this happiness, unhappiness within us. Okay? External things are just a trigger. If you can get a glimpse of that, then you realize this so-called detachment is not a thing, it's a bliss. It's the opposite. Then you realize that is where the true happiness is. But we have your conviction. If we don't have that full conviction, halfway, it won't work. You know? So that is maybe slowly, slowly, through practice, we have to try to get that, not to deny the world. We look at the world as a stimulus only, triggering, like a theater. So happiness, enjoyment comes, sahuda, when you observe it. If we can see that, we can appreciate both. We don't have to run away. We can be here. Let me look at now you're sitting here. It's a beautiful place, huh? But after a while, then we can be frightened or kind of all the city life. <laughs> that is where the action is. How long can we be here? Isn't it? We, our mind telling that. But this, you can see what I'm trying to say, okay? So we had to train ourselves, get a little bit of a glimpse. It's a gradual process. Every day, do the yoga. At least then be with yourself. And that's what the Buddhist meditation is all about. Just to be with you. 
starting the pranayama in the buddhism we call anapansate just be visual just breathe in and breathe out Ten more minutes? Yes. Huh? Ten more, okay? Yes. Okay, just think about it. Because the breath is a beautiful place. There's a center where you can connect your mind and the body. So the breath is a physical and the mind awareness is a mind. When you're aware of the breath and you become your mind and body get together. Okay, let's start with that. Think that when you do the, all the asanas, you just be with your body. And if you look at, and if you get this point out, and when you look at all this beautiful happiness and unhappiness within, wow, how lucky we are, no? For all within. Can we be better than that? We are in the heaven. We don't want to go anywhere. External world just to activate it. If we are numb, you can get very quick the point. Doesn't matter where you are, even if you're in the heaven, if you're physically numb, would you enjoy it? You see? So we are gifted. To be born as a human being, it's the greatest blessing. That's why the animal, they don't have that ability. But they have benefit compared to us now. But if you become fully human, then we are higher. But because we haven't attained that level, we suffer more than animals. That's the reality. But because we are not fully living to what we are. But if you ever get a glimpse of what we really are, if you get, then we can see we are. Because we are capable of more happiness than anything. Even the loving kindness, compassion, being grateful. It is a beautiful quality. <coughs> you know? Those things not easy, but all had to start with it. If you can't appreciate your own life being, how can you appreciate anything else? No? Because what you feel here is what you share. So if you don't feel compassion, if you don't feel love for yourself, if you don't feel grateful for yourself, how can you give to others? It won't work. It sounds a bit of selfishness, no? Like unfortunately Christian tradition say, it's a selfishness. But the selfishness means it's a the real word, meaning of the selfishness, eh? trying to be happy at the expense of others, depriving other people. That's a selfishness way. Really. This, this, this selfishness is just self-love. When you do that, you lose the self. You become your part. Like in Zen Buddhism, we are told that we practice Dharma to study ourselves. To study ourselves, we have to lose ourselves. That means we see we are all one. So when you really experience self-love, you can't stop that. They automatically feel you are interconnected. It is this boundary that's the problem. Okay? So experience it. Learn to be grateful, not for what you have, just being what you are. If you're going to appreciate yourself because what you have, then you lose it. Okay? Happiness is that what we are. Okay then? Any question? Yes, okay. Continue. Any question? Bhantati, you said about detachment. Hmm? You, you talked about detachment. So how do you practice? 
Can you make a question better? I couldn't help. You need to talk detachment. Detachment, she's asking about. And? You said that you have to detach yourself mm. in order to enjoy the real happiness. So she's asking that how can you uh, make them, how can you practice that? How to practice it? <laughs> mm. The my Zen answer is the attachment is an illusion. Because when you say we want to detach, you're already thinking that we can be attached. Isn't it? But the truth is we are not attached at all. How can we get attached to anything? But the problem is we struggle to get attached. What we really detachment means stopping that struggle. You understand? To realize there's no such thing attachment at all. How can we attach to this body is a collection of what? Start from there. What is this body made of? Mahabhutas. <laughs> Mahabhuta belong to the earth. So who is all it? But we do all this, my body, my body. You see, that is self illusion, but it's real because there is this struggle. Can you see that? Even though we know this body belongs to the universe, there's a struggle. And if you can see, it's a, just only struggle. There's no real attachment. It's very easy. Just to just to let go of the struggle. We are not letting go anything. But detachment say, oh, I have to, um, if I'm detached, I'm going to lose so many things. Okay, that's the illusion. Buddha asked, I will summarize this one, Gata, very nice one. Neitam apta katam bimba, neitam para katam agam, hetu patita sambhutam, Hetu Bhanga Rujjati. It is talking about this body is a construct of Mahabhutas coming to being due to condition, maintained by the condition, this whole condition. But Puttamati Dhanamati Itibalo Vihanyati Attayarta Nonati Kuto Putta. But that is a struggle. <laughs> This is me, this is my body, my thing, my thing, my thing. It's particularly laughing at your own faith. Here one we say this all comes from. At the same time, so this is mine. You have to see that avijja illusion. That's what the whole Hinduism wants us to see that. So this detachment is not a struggle at all. Nothing to lose there. You only lose in the struggle. That's what the Bharata Manishara says, like if you want to enjoy, if you just be part of the play, you won't enjoy it. Then you take a side out, oh, I like this particular character. Then you lose the whole story. If you want to enjoy the whole thing, you should not be attached to anything. Because attachment is a struggle. Understand? So to begin with, we have to understand there's no attachment at all. But we don't have a lot of time because the human mind is very interesting. And the Paul Jin Sartre said the one of the greatest skills in human life is self-deception. We know how to cheat ourselves. <laughs> And that is how we learn to enjoy life. You say, oh, this is mine, my thing, my thing. It's a, it's a mind created that illusion. Because if you see the truth, you can't do it. 
So we had to deceive ourselves continuously. So this attachment like that is a self-deception. We deceive ourselves into thinking I am attached. But in reality we are not attached. If you can be attached, go for it. <laughs> that is my <laughs> idea. If you can attach, go for it. Why should anyone stop that? But unfortunately we know uh, it is impossible. That is why we are unhappy. Because the very first step is wrong. We thinking we can get hold of it. And from the very beginning, we are doomed to lose. And I said, because start with the wrong view, we can be attached. So the truth is, we are struggling with the senses, that's the pratyahara. So I will give you a tell you later. The senses all is want. That's where the problem is. We are like a very frightened, but constantly want to hold on to something. If you don't get frightened, frustrated. So that's what the way to do is yoga is a good practice. Okay then, we have other thing to do. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pati. Yesterday yes. actually we were talking about Vedanta. Hmm? Yesterday we were talking about non-dualism. Ah. So we were discussing certain things. You know, I'm glad that you brought about the concept of happiness and mm -hmm. between happiness and pleasure. Yes. If you can, for, for the sake of public, if you can differentiate between happiness and the pleasure. So some people are confused that they, you know, like you said that happiness is independent of external stimuli. Mm -hmm. And pleasure is something which senses enjoy. Mm -hmm. So most people confuse happiness with the pleasure. Mm -hmm. they, 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 as you would know, one is a cold arm misasuka in the Pali world. The sensory gratification. Mm. That may be what you call pleasure. pleasure. Because we need something. Mm. The good example, the classical Indian example, okay, if we have an itch, okay, and we feel itchy, and then we think we start to scratch. No? When we keep on scratching, then we feel a bit better. Little bit better no? Tell me, even though it causes you more pain, you have the pleasure. So later on what happened, be afraid to stop. Why? If you stop, there are two problems now. The first pain will come and we lose that pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Can you see that? Two problems. So now we keep on doing. That's called sensory gratification. Okay. The other one, what you call detachment, this is a very big paradox. You know, very big. There was a Ganta very, just actually last week I was learning here. It says that when the senses are not with the external thing, no sense of gratification, the pleasure you get is called Amanusirati Hoti. It's a beyond the pleasure of even heavenly, like music or anything. The closest simile they give is hard to understand feeling of health. Normally we think health is in absence of pain, but that's not correct. That's a state of your being 